we have countless children across the developing world that need access to education. So where do, where do most kind of causes go wrong? Why, why can't we solve this? And in, you know, my belief is that there's two disparate spaces traditionally. There's profit and there's purpose. And the, the core founding of Pencils of Promise is really where idealism starts to mean acumen. Um, but these two spaces don't have to be so separate. And I think as you see you know, companies and culture shift, one of the things is that companies are actually starting to become very dedicated to making the world better. My big idea was why don't nonprofits start to operate in the same way that best-in-class companies are built? And that intersection, I believe, is something that I call profitable purpose, where each of us can maximize our value for ourselves and our families and in the service of others. And so I started to think more and more and really start to um, research the, the industry more broadly. And it seemed like um, there was a big issue. And the single biggest issue is that we call ourselves nonprofits. We start by apologizing, by saying this is what we're not. And I fundamentally disagree with that, OK? So no one in this room, no one that works in this space does so to not create something, let alone profit. We're driven by maximizing the value that we're able to create in this space. And so the first thing that I felt was really important was to reframe the language by which we address ourselves in the broader space. And so I started by saying, all right, we're not a nonprofit. We're for purpose. Everyone in this room works on a for purpose business. Whether you're a 501c3 registered organization, like Pencils of Promise, where you get a tax deduction, deduction for your donors, or not, whether you're a social venture or a social entrepreneur, we are all in the for purpose space, which I see as the intersection between for profit and nonprofit. The second thing was then to start to evaluate where do causes go wrong, in particular the nonprofits, because um, that's the space that, that I work in. So um, three huge issues. One is that there's a lack of clear, tangible impact. You never know where your money goes. The second is that you, they only target the select few. It's only a couple donors that we're going to acquiesce towards. And then the third was that the programs aren't designed for scale. They're designed for emotional impact. And if you're actually dedicated to making the world better, at some point you have to get past your immense emotional uh, commitment and just say, is this working or not? And let's be honest with ourselves about it. And from day one, take the, the ego out of it and just say, does it work or not? And if it doesn't, we need to change things. So programs need to be designed for scale. Um, so this is how we've gone about those three things at Pencils of Promise. One was we said we're going to have clearly a tangible impact. Two, we're going to build a brand, and a brand that can play with best-in-class for-profit brands, and it's going to be driven by word of mouth more than anything. When you look at um, the rise of digital, 92% of people are likely to purchase something if a friend recommends it. You see all this user-generated uh, content and engines that lead to people buying things or not buying things. Why don't we have the same type of brand for people to select where their charitable contributions go? And then the third one was the most important to me, design programs for scale from day one. And so now I'll really dive into these three and how we've done it. And I'm completely uh, collaborative in this entire space. And so if anybody wants to take any of this and apply it to your, your company, your programs, et cetera, I would highly um, encourage it. And I'm also very, very open to hearing how other people have gone about these type of things. So first was clear, tangible impact. Uh, we made it incredibly simple. It's $25 for us to educate a child. It's $10,000 for us to build a classroom. And on average, our schools are $25,000. And this is my brother who donated his birthday, raised enough money to build a school, and just traveled with me to Guatemala to um, actually see that school and open it up uh, last month. So then we uh, said, let's take it a bit further. Uh, so most donors uh, that give online, they give in small amounts. They want to know exactly where their money goes. So we said 100% can go to programs from all of the online donations. We'll GPS map it. Then let's start to tell the stories of showing before and after pictures of a bamboo hut that's supposed to house an entire village of 1,800 people's children and how that's been transformed into a four-classroom structure that will last the next 40 years. And then we said, all right, let's go a bit further and be completely open about how we operate. Let's, let's share this with the world and be transparent and let people critique it and evaluate it. And so we posted all of our data online, and then we got evaluated by Harvard Business School, Stanford uh, GSB, and MIT. And not only were we endorsed, but we were then funded by the student bodies of each of those three institutions. Um, then we said about word of mouth driven brand. How do you create something like this? Well, the answer is, especially if you're 25 and you're starting a company like this and you have no resources, you get in an RV with your four best friends and you drive across the country and you speak at colleges. So this was my very first speech uh, about three years ago. Um, we booked it at Oklahoma State University, the largest university that we could find. And I walked into the room and this is what I saw. Um, and 
Uh, I'm sure this is a, a room that's very good at math. As I said, four of the people in the room are my best friends. And, um, so there was one girl, a uh, girl in the yellow, Chelsea Canada. Uh, she was the only person in that room that attended my very first talk. But she said, I believe in this, and I want to help you build a presence at Oklahoma State University. And from Chelsea's commitment, she helped us build an early school. And now we have a presence across, um, I would assume, hundreds of college campuses. There's a lot more than we're able to track at this point. And early on, we said we want to create a word of mouth brand that's young, that's youth driven, because I was young. And things changed um, right on at, at, as we reached our third year last year. And I was planning out the third year of my birthday party. And I was talking to our interns and our staff, and I said, guys, you know, it's, it's a big party. I want it to rock. I want it to be really fun. What should we do? And I, I, we talked about it. I went out to lunch. And Eddie, one of our 21-year-old graphic design interns, apparently turned to another and said, it's really weird when old people talk about rocking. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, um, things shifted. It was no longer just about youth. They're always going to be the core of what Pencils of Promise is. They will always drive the energy and culture of the organization. But it was about creating a brand for all people, not just the selected few. Um, well, how did we do it? We did it through digital more than anything else, and we continue to do so. About six weeks ago, we unveiled a platform that we built called School Builder. You know, that's a rotating, scrolling, your blank could build a school. Every second, that shows a new idea to people. And in six weeks, we've launched more than 1,500 campaigns. And we're signing up more than 100 people a day right now to create campaigns to build a school. And that doesn't always have to result in a school. For some people, it's $250 to educate 10 children. For others, it's a $10,000 classroom. There are these amazing stories that are pouring in. Um, this is a girl, Tanya, who uh, I recently found out was on the streets of New York City on 42nd and 10th, just shouting to people to support Pencils of Promise. She raised $250 to educate 10 children. Um, we're running a campaign right now called The Impossible Ones. We said, why don't we try and get people to overcome impossible things to help us educate children around the world? Kennedy Donnelly, this girl, uh, has just completed riding a bicycle across the entire United States throughout the entire summer to raise $10,000 to build a classroom. And then this is a guy, Lewis Howes, who um, literally just came up to me at an event and said, uh, I want to build a school. And I said, that's great. Uh, that would be phenomenal. Let's do it. And I said, how? He said, well, my birthday's coming up. I want to do it on my birthday. But I have a company, and I want to match every single dollar that somebody gives so that they know that I'm invested as well. So for my birthday, I'm going to try and raise $12,500. And my company is going to match that. And we just opened up a, a school dedicated to his parents um, down in Nicaragua. And so these stories have perpetuated a word of mouth brand and movement. Um, and with that brand and movement, that's where the kind of leanings from the for-profit space come in. That's where when you have a captive audience, when you have a community, you find that there's value that you can offer to the for-profits of the world. And these brands, they want to collaborate. And so we've launched partnerships and collaborations with every brand here. We've built four schools with Google. Um, Dolce & Gabbana on Fashion Night Out last year said we want a charitable partner, raised $35,000 to help us build um, three new classrooms. And now we just launched sunglasses with Warby Parker uh, in August. Birchbox, a monthly subscription company, did a co-brand where their um, people ended up raising enough money to help us build a new school. And so the idea that business is evil does not exist anymore when you're in this space. Again, from the for-purpose mentality, there should be an intersection that we should all be um, collaborating upon. So the way that we work, last part is most important, taking programs to scale. Um, we identify high-need villages. We take uh, the same model that we would apply to Bain to, to working with companies for their um, store expansion. And we go through a rigorous, rigorous assessment of communities, things like need, sustainability, cost efficiency, impact, and most importantly, the community's commitment, that they're active partners here. Our communities provide, on average, a 20% investment in our schools. They don't have the money, and so they end up physically building the schools themselves, which is uh, exceptional for us. And then we train and support teachers to make sure that there's long-term um, support there. We've taken this now across four countries um, in four years. This is our true impact. We've built 80 schools. Uh, excuse me, we'll break ground on our 80th um, this month. Uh, there's over 400,000 supporters, and more than 3 million hours have been delivered of education. Uh, the last piece that I'll leave you with is what we're most proud of. 100% um, of these schools are not only fully operational, they're built by locals, they're taught by locals, they're sustained by locals, and data that I just got in on Friday that we're sharing for the first time is about the outcomes of that education. Teachers are reporting.
85% in literacy, uh, uh, an increase in literacy, uh, teachers are reporting at 85%, 88% on numeracy, and 90% test scores. Um, we'll plan to break ground on a new school every 90 hours in the coming year. Uh, but it doesn't happen without hopefully that one person that I was looking for in the room participating. And so this is the easiest way to find me, adamandipromise.org. And uh, if you'll bear with me, the last thing I'd like to share is that the time is now. Um, there's an exceptional movement happening. It starts in a place like this. It starts at Chicago Ideas Week. Um, times are changing very, very rapidly. And uh, I hope that every person in this room can participate uh, as we collectively um, move towards a world in which four purposes at the core of how each of us operate. Thank you so much. Thank you.